And, and I think this is important too, right? So what applications you're looking at today and how are they really gonna work for you? Because if you're on-prem and you're moving to the cloud, you can't do any of this, right? But now if you're moving to the cloud, it's it's not, you know, it's gonna be a, an investment for the lift, but once you're there, a lot of doors are gonna open. So Chris, how can we help part, how can we help customers as partners get started on this? And so, you know, there's low hanging fruit is what I would say. So there's readily available applications that can be plugged in. And Mary's gonna talk about one, but you look at, if you look at, and I think the organization has to step back and look at where do they have labor constraints? Where do they feel like there's too much manual process and too many people? And 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 that's where we begin to, to attack the problem. And I think, again, there's gonna be readily available off the shelf solutions. And then there's gonna be the other ones where you may need to put some thought in and maybe a little bit of custom for them. And again, I'm, I'm a big integration architect. So I like automating data flows and putting intelligence behind them because again, we collapse effort, we collapse redundancy. So like I said, I still think there's some analysis on where are we, where's the big efforts that are hugely redundant Focus on there. Are there off-the-shelf solutions? Great, we look at those. If not, what's the ROI in building a custom solution? If if you solve the problem permanently and you're manning the exceptions, but I think that's how it starts. And you know, the lift to build a custom solution is a lot less than it used to be, right? Yeah. Because we're into a lot of uh, low-code uh, type applications. A lot of you know ISVs have built pieces for us. So I think I think that's uh, an excellent uh, point. 